Oh, at Chris Knighty's wedding, he told me he'd take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the, what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let yeah. me move, man, before I do something. You're going to make me mess up the wedding. He said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah. I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. What the fuck? Yo, why, I mean, why are you in fifth? Just, hey, yo. Why are y'all not? Hey, yo, I don't have no beef. Wait, 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 wait. I, I don't know why. My bad bitches, I'm pretty than a motherfucker. Hawk me looking okay. Yeah. She can yeah, she fucking with me. Is this bitch okay? <laughs> he said he ain't fucking around. I look at him like okay. I used to be. I ain't bugging. I ain't bugging. I ain't bugging. Okay. I'm pretty than a motherfucker. Hawk me looking okay. She think that she fucking with me. Is this bitch okay? He said he ain't fucking around. I look at him like okay. I used to be. Down south, bad bitches, street shit, so ratchet. Call me JT, aka the soul snatcher. Okay. I'm with a booster, scholar, and a pole dancer. Pussy nigga, call my phone, he won't get no answer. Nah. Fuck these niggas, fuck them. And fuck these hoes, who you can't fuck with me, fuck what a bitch told okay. you. Sexy black motherfucker. Yeah. He came on the wood, I'm watching Jimmy Butler. Wish since I came home, I've been killing every summer. Back real boss bitch, and I started as a runner. Like titties sitting pretty, and I'm looking like a snack. 40 inch bust now, we know that bitch black. I'm pretty than a motherfucker, hoes me looking okay. She think that she fucking with me, is this bitch okay? Not disturb, bitch, I'm with my nigga. Okay, stout name, say in it's from my nigga. Bitch, say she pregnant, it ain't from my nigga. Nah, I don't pay for shit, it's all on my nigga. Bitch, Maserati mummy, in the roof missing. She ate crab legs, now her whole tooth missing. Cheap ass veneers, you stay talking shit. Put a marker to this bitch, she's so counterfeit. I'm the baddie in the CEO. Gothic bitches shaking ass and videos In the cut, getting high with an emo hoe We in wrong way, you bitches in dark chat, oh Whoa, whoa I'm pretty than a motherfucker, hoes me looking okay She think that she fucking with me, is this bitch okay? He say he ain't fucking around, I look at him like okay I used to be down bad, but now a bitch okay I'm pretty than a motherfucker, hoes me looking okay She think that she fucking with me, is this bitch okay? What's going on with Papa Hunter Tennis Crew? How y'all doing? Happy Monday to y'all. Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome, everybody. Come on in. Make sure you smash that like button. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend. Um, For returning Hunter Tennis Crew, y'all already know what to do. Y'all just some Hunter signs in the chat. Y'all some boots in the chat. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Melanie Jones, and this is Melanie Jones Said So. Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. My accent is heavy and so is my tongue. No ditty. <laughs> so pardon the accent. Um, if you're not sure like why everybody's dropping 100 signs or boots in the chat. 100 signs because I keep it 100. Boots in the chat because that represents where I'm from. Brooklyn, New York. And New York, uh, New York City. Timberland boots represent us. That's a staple of our town. Staple of our city. So whenever you see those dropped in the chat, that's what, that's where we represent. All right. So welcome everybody. And again, uh, make sure you hit that like button, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Y'all, we go. I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna. I want to uh, dive a little deeper. Get into this. Um, get into the death of Chris Lighty, and uh, maybe some new theories. 
uh, you know, that may be resurfacing regarding his death. Now, this is a trigger warning, trigger warning. Um, Chris Lighty uh, was found deceased in his home August 30th, 2012. Um, uh it was self-inflicted, um, so he did take his own life. So that is a trigger warning. I did want to give you guys a heads up. And I just wanted to make this disclaimer. If you do know anyone that is suffering from depression or suicidal thoughts, please, please, please uh, try to get them some help. Or if you feel like you're having those type of thoughts, please check yourself into the nearest hospital. Call emergency, call 911 to get yourself some help. Um, it's just never worth it to take your own life please 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 disclaimer don't ever take your own life um you know things will get better it can always be worked out and i just pray and hope you know the strength for everyone's mental health out there and having said that so we're going to get into um again we're going to get into chris lighty um again who took his own life back in uh august 30th 2012 there are new speculations going around now that, uh, of course, you already know, your boy. <laughs> They're about to blame, yo. Unfortunately, Diddy done, Diddy done did it now. Diddy done messed up with whomever he done messed up with, the powers that be, the elites, the honchos, whoever it is that he answers to, because they are going to pin every crime in New York on Diddy. Well, even coast to coast might be global because they 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 looking into his behind over there in England. So hey, <laughs> yeah, he might be in a world of trouble, literally. Okay, so we are gonna get into this Chris Lighty situation though. We just gonna touch on this real quick. So as you guys know, like I said, Chris Lighty um passed away August thirtieth, twenty twelve, and um for those that were uh. You know, around Chris Lighty, for those that work with Chris Lighty, you know, all the most majority of them have, you know, uh, basically the same, uh, you know, uh, uh, same thought pattern when it comes to Chris Lighty. They say he's full of life. He loved life. He loved his kids. He loved his family. You know, he was a, he had a vivacious spirit, very vibrant, very energetic, very good at what he did. Um, he was, you know, he was a professional in the music industry, in the music, in the entertainment industry. He managed a lot of big artists. He was a great negotiator. So, you know, he definitely, he was a great businessman. He actually um, started Violator um, record label. Uh, one of the top artists on that label is Busta Rhymes, but you know he had many great artists on that label, label, and he also managed a lot of great artists and a lot of big name artists. I don't, you know, I ain't talking about the chitlin circuit. I'm talking about some big names out here. So we gonna get into some things real quick. Let's get into, um, well actually he also managed Fifty Cent, uh, who that you saw in that first clip. So uh, that was actually uh, Fifty Cent um, explaining how. Diddy wanted to take him shopping at Chris Lighty's wedding. And and 50 Cent looked at Diddy like, what the hell is wrong with you, bro? Like, what are you talking about? What is your problem? And which is one of uh Diddy's little tactics on how he gets his, you know, his get his little you know, his little friends. You know, it's, he got his Ciroc boys, you know, he gives them, you know, gives them a little piece of the Ciroc pie. And then he uh, then he uh, attempts to take his friends shopping for clothes. I don't know what that's about, but you know, no Diddy. But um, so and uh, Chris Lighty also managed Diddy as well, which is one of the big name artists that he managed. But I wanted to get into something real quick, which could possibly be one of the reasons why uh, Diddy is uh, presumably uh, jealous of Chris Lighty. But before we get into that, um. I wanted to uh, also point out that uh, in 2011, under the guise of a heart condition, Chris secretly checked into a psychiatric facility in a suburban in suburban Connecticut, where he was diagnosed with clinical depression. So he was diagnosed with clinical depression. Um, however, again, like I said, those that were close to him, you know say that he had a very vivacious and energetic spirit um you know things like that so you know they find it hard to believe that he suffered with depression so 
you know, I, you know, and again, some people that do suffer with depression. I will say this on the flip side. Some people that suffer with depression don't necessarily show it. You know, they do mask their pain. Um, Robin Williams, for example, was one of those people. He entertained us. He kept us laughing. He was a comedian. You know, he entertained others. But again, he was suffering in silence. So, um, you know, just because a person presents a vivacious and energetic spirit outwardly to, you know, to the general public or to outsiders that don't really know internally what they're going through. So I just want to be clear about that and, you know, don't make any mistake about that. Someone can be suffering from depression and not show signs of it. And or, or some people are not aware of it, you know, because they put on a brave face. They put on a mask. They put on a guise of, you know, I'm, you know, I'm here to entertain. I'm here to make, you know, to make you happy. But they're not happy internally. So I just want to make, you know, make that clear. But um, let's get into this, guys, because, again, it's some things that I found out. Um, regarding Chris Lighty and the connection to Puff besides him um, being Puff's manager or Diddy's manager Love Sean whatever you want to call him Dirtbag this dude right here Chris Lighty had a bit of more per personal connection to Diddy so hold on y'all Chris Lighty was a significant figure in the music industry having founded Violator Records and managed big names like Diddy 50 Cent and Mariah Carey Tragically, he was found dead in his home in 2012, and his death was ruled a suicide. However, there are eerie similarities between his death and the deaths of others close to Diddy, such as Kim Porter and Shakir Stewart. Let's delve into Chris Lighty's background. He started with Jungle Brothers and a tribe called Quest, before making his mark in the industry. He was known for his negotiation skills, charm, and business acumen. Chris was instrumental in 50 Cent's vitamin water deal and many other successful collaborations. People close to Chris, including his wife Veronica, have questioned the official narrative of his death. Despite reports of financial troubles and a rocky marriage, Veronica clarified that they were on good terms and that the debt had been mostly paid off. This raises doubts about the suicide ruling. Adding to the intrigue, there's speculation about Diddy's jealousy over Chris's relationship with Kim Porter. It's suggested that Diddy couldn't handle the competition, both professionally and personally. Okay. So apparently, Chris Lady dated Kim Porter. I did not know that, did y'all? Throw some hundred signs in the chat if y'all knew that already. Throw some boots in the chat if y'all didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm like, all right now, wait a minute now. now. This puts a little different light on things. This puts a little different light on things. It's starting to see, and again, I know what people, you know, some people have their theories. Oh, you know, this is a money grab by, you know, the government. I, was, I did a video on uh, Ed Lover. He was on Drink Champs. He kind of alluded to like the feds have Diddy in a trick bag and they want to deplete his, um, you know, his finances, you know, to prove a point or, you know, to get him to a point where they need you know, what they want him to be. So he can, I guess, dime out the rest, you know, all of his guests at his freak off parties, not, you know, whatever the goal is for the, for the, in the close out their case and secure the win. Cause we already know the feds have a high conviction rate. So, um, especially New York, New York feds, New York City feds, they don't play that. So, um, good luck, Diddy, with that whole situation. But, um, again, that is news to me that Chris Lighty dated Kim Porter. I was like, what? I said, okay. So, just going back a bit to the day that, um, Chris Lighty was found in his home. And it was actually by his assistant, I believe. Um, let me just pull this up here for you guys. And again, on that day, now this is... Now I'm going to, you know, just give you guys a little... We're going to recap back a little bit regarding the day that Chris Lighty's uh, body was found in his home. And that day, his daughter Tiffany had moved out of the family home to the Bronx, to, uh, from the Bronx, because Chris Lighty's from the Bronx. She moved out of the family home in the Bronx and moved in with a friend in Toronto. So, you know, his child has, you know, basically moved out of the home and moved to another country at that. Even though Canada's not that far, but it's, it's far enough, you know. 
But um, he said the same day, Veronica, his wife, um, kicked him out of the family home. Uh, you know, due to their uh, issues, you know, marital issues and things like that. And I'm sure the finances and the debt was a major part of, you know, the problems that they were having. Um, let me see here. Okay, so, yeah, so basically, the daughter moved out. The wife had kicked him out. He has all this immense debt piling up on him. It would fit the narrative that that would be overwhelming to the point where, you know, he would consider taking his own life and going through with it. You know, his family's crumbling, his businesses is all you know his money is depleting his businesses are crumbling deals are falling through investments are going bad and his family's falling apart so that definitely fits that narrative of okay it was too much for him you know he wanted to escape got it so his assistant uh Bubba Barker uh got a frantic call from Liar Cohen's assistant to uh, tell him to go check on uh, Chris at the house. Okay, because the wife had uh, took a flight. The wife had left. The daughter moved out. He's home alone. So they're telling Bubba Barker to go check on Chris. He goes to check on him and that's where he finds him unalived in his home. So when he gets there, um, you know, by the time he gets there, by the, by the time uh, Barker gets there, a crowd of friends is surrounding the home. Um, Daryl Thompson, one of his friends from childhood, and a few other people were let inside the home. So the assistant, the childhood friend, and a few other people were let inside the home. And more so, I guess, to maybe identify him to make sure that it's him, you know, that is deceased. And now you have... Chris's colleagues, some of his clients, they're all formulated outside of the home. And you have some people that uh, were in disbelief of the entire situation. They were in disbelief that he was gone and they were in disbelief that he took his own life. So I wanted to get into this real quick, y'all. I wanted, I wanted to get into this real quick because I feel as though this is very important, um, you know, for y'all to understand kind of the dynamic and kind of where my mind was going with this because I found this a little, um, a little suspicious. I found it a little suspicious, y'all, so hold on a moment. Chris Lighty was an influential figure in the music industry and his sudden death in 2012 raised many questions. Chris Lighty's involvement with Diddy began when he started managing him. Despite Diddy's substantial influence, Chris was a force to be reckoned with in the industry. He had the expertise, the connections, and the charisma that made him a significant player. This power dynamic might have created tension, especially when Chris began dating Kim Porter, who had a long history with Diddy. The circumstances surrounding Chris Lighty's death are puzzling. On August 30th, 2012, he was found dead from a gunshot wound in his Bronx home. The authorities quickly ruled it a suicide, citing his alleged financial troubles and ongoing divorce as possible motives. However, close friends and family members have disputed these claims, pointing out inconsistencies in the official story. Veronica, Chris's wife, provided crucial insights. Contrary to reports, she mentioned that they were not in the midst of a contentious divorce, and that Chris had paid off most of his debt. This contradicts the narrative that financial pressure drove him to take his own life. Furthermore, Veronica emphasized that Chris was in good spirits and was actively working on new projects. The parallels between Chris Lighty's death and the deaths of others close to Diddy are striking. Kim Porter, Diddy's longtime partner and the mother of his children, also died under mysterious circumstances. Similarly, Shakir Stewart, another music executive linked to Diddy, was found dead in 2008, and his death was also ruled a suicide. These patterns have led some to speculate about a possible connection. Diddy's career has been marked by numerous controversies, and his relationships with those around him often end in tragedy. 
Whether these incidents are purely coincidental or indicative of something more sinister remains a subject of intense debate. Many in the industry remain wary and stories about Diddy's alleged involvement in these tragedies continue to circulate. Nat So yeah, that's a little piece of interesting. That's a little interesting to me that Kim Porter, Chris Lighty, you know, other people, other people's unalivements are somewhat suspicious, you know, that and all of them are connected to Diddy. And I mean they're fairly young, they're fairly healthy. They're just suspiciously going in like weird fashions. Kim Porter, you know, unexpectedly got sick. You know, uh, with uh, with a severe case of the flu that took her out. Chris Lighty's depression overwhelmed him to the point where he wanted to take his own life. In which some of his co-workers and his clients and his close friends and family do not believe that he would take his own life. In fact, Ed Lover said so on Drink Champs. Y'all get into this. But moving around, uh, the death of Chris Lighty. I still don't believe Chris Lighty took his own life. I will never believe Chris Lighty took his own life. Uh, right. Chris Lighty was too full of himself to take his right. own life. Right. Chris Lighty was too full of life, too much love for his children, and too much love for his for this business for him to take his own life. I don't think anybody that was closely associated with Chris in any manner, and you were probably yep. closer to Chris mm -hmm. than I was. We were neighbors, but mm -hmm. he was hardly home. He's mm -hmm. moving, I'm moving it in our own directions. We had barbecues together. We right. gave our kids, yeah. yep. Summer and Christian, you okay. were there. Okay, yeah. We gave him the big birthday party, and they both slept through it because they were right. only one years old. <laughs> Spent fifteen thousand dollars a piece on the fucking <laughs> horses, all kind of dumb shit. It's an adult party. Chris, it turned into an adult party, uh, right? But that's how much life Chris had in him. So right. I will never, ever, ever believe, and I don't give a damn what nobody says that Chris Lighty took his own life. That's one thing that I will never believe. Right. Listen, and Lover is not the only person that believe Chris Lighty did not take his own life. In fact, Q-Tip was one of the people, Q-Tip from A Child Called Quest, a rapper from A Child Called Quest. Um, he was actually outside of Chris Lighty's home. And he was just pacing back and forth. Um, you know, he's being described with his hands in his pockets. He wasn't saying anything to anybody. You know, he was just looking, you know, he was in pure disbelief, but his, you know, I guess his body language was very telling that, you know, just something about the situation wasn't right. Havoc, one half of the group, Mob Deep, you know what I mean? Those from the New York City area, oh yeah, hip hop heads definitely know um, Havoc from Mob Deep, who uh, also perished from complications with his sickle cell. I'm throwing up air quotes behind here if y'all can't see. <laughs> he um he he perished from complications from his sickle cell. Sometime after he made a a video, a vlog, if you will, from his car describing the Illuminati, their practices, and participants in it. But that's just my little piece of theory. Just throwing that out there. Catch it if you will. And Havoc was outside the house. I'm, yeah, Havoc was outside the house as well. And Havoc yelled out, This don't fucking feel right. Havoc just screams that out while Chris Lighty's brother and a couple of his other friends are bringing his body out of the house to put it in the car on this, um, in the back of the car on his truck. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. Y'all drop down in the comments and let me know what y'all think. It's, it's giving weird. It's giving weird. It's giving Diddy is. 
dancing. And again, all of y'all that was hanging out with Diddy, dancing at them parties, dancing at them. They ain't nothing like a Diddy party. Y'all was out there dancing at them parties. Y'all was really dancing with the devil, child. Ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? Yeah, I was out there dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight, child. Mm-mm. Something is not right about this situation. I'm sorry. I, you know, I, I'm trying. I'm trying. We, we got to stick with the evidence. We got to stick with the facts. We got, you know, we, he gets his day in court. He's innocent until proven guilty. All this is allegedly in my commentary. And this, these clips I'm using is under fair use. I'm just bringing it to y'all for the information. However, it's given. Diddy is really the devil and not even for nothing again was Diddy not the Joker one Halloween hello you ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight what this Diddy oh lord Diddy 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 and for those welcome everybody we just not getting in the building we just going over some suspicious activity regarding the um, an alignment of Chris Lighty, who, according to the medical report that was concluded, took his own life. However, we do know suspicious things can happen and evidence can be positioned in certain ways to make certain situations look a certain way. And now there's new speculation that Diddy could have possibly had something to do with the unalignment, unalignment of Chris Lighty because close friends and family don't believe he took his own life. And for those that just got here, I'll play this clip for you again to refresh your memory. Chris Lighty was an influential figure in the music industry, and his sudden death in 2012 raised many questions. Chris Lighty's involvement with Diddy began when he started managing him. Despite Diddy's substantial influence, Chris was a force to be reckoned with in the industry. He had the expertise, the connections, and the charisma that made him a significant player. This power dynamic might have created tension, especially when Chris began dating Kim Porter, who had a long history with Diddy. The circumstances surrounding Chris Lighty's death are puzzling. On August 30th, 2012, he was found dead from a gunshot wound in his Bronx home. The authorities quickly ruled it a suicide, citing his alleged financial troubles and ongoing divorce as possible motives. However, close friends and family members have disputed these claims, pointing out inconsistencies in the official story. Veronica, Chris's wife, provided crucial insights. Contrary to reports, she mentioned that they were not in the midst of a contentious divorce and that Chris had paid off most of his debt. This contradicts the narrative that financial pressure drove him to take his own life. Furthermore, Veronica emphasized that Chris was in good spirits and was actively working on new projects the parallels between Chris Lighty's death and the deaths of others close to Diddy are striking. Kim Porter, Diddy's longtime partner and the mother of his children, also died under mysterious circumstances. Similarly, Shakir Stewart, another music executive linked to Diddy, was found dead in 2008, and his death was also ruled a suicide. These patterns have led some to speculate about a possible connection. Diddy's career has been marked by numerous controversies, and his relationships with those around him often end in tragedy. Whether these incidents are purely coincidental or indicative of something more sinister remains a subject of intense debate. Many in the industry remain wary and stories about Diddy's alleged involvement in these tragedies continue to circulate. Nat I don't know, y'all. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a damn duck. I don't trust nothing with this dude no more. I don't put nothing past this guy. All these allegations, now children are involved, animals are involved. It's giving, again, it's giving, Diddy, is y'all all at these parties dancing with this man, and y'all was, meanwhile, y'all was dancing with the devil. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? Crazy crazy and my bad let me correct myself i do apologize havoc is a part of the group mob deep however havoc did not pass away i'm sorry i canceled those words havoc did not pass away prodigy passed away my 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 bad y'all so i wanted to correct myself before i ended the video but um prodigy passed away from complications with um sickle cell not havoc i'm sorry he's a surviving member of 
on Mob Deep. So just for clarification. But y'all, I listen. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Diddy, you it's, it's everybody seems to be passing away around you through the suspicious circumstances. Heavy D. He just now Heavy D just lost weight. Heavy D was eating healthy on a diet. Heavy D lost weight. He drops down. Andre Harrell. Nobody even knew he was sick. He just drops down. I'll be sure almost got taken the hell up out of here. But thank God he's allowed to tell his story. And I believe Christopher Williams was a little piece of jacked up too. Kim Porter passed away out of nowhere. She was, you know, seemingly healthy. Just passed away out of nowhere from a cold. Okay. And now Chris Light, he oh, so overwhelmed with his problems. He takes his own life. It's definitely possible. But we definitely have to be sure about these things. I don't know, but there's some new circular, you know, there's there's new there's new speculation about it. So we shall see. They might open up his, you know, open up Chris Lighty's case again. Like they're doing for Kim Porter, possibly. I don't know. That's a lot. But Chris Lighty, he was a force to be reckoned with as well. And he 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 may not have been as flashy and as I want to say as flashy as Puff. You know, Chris Lighty, he was a he was a heavy hitter in the music industry as well. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't running around here, you know, on the chilling circuit. He, like I said, he managed a lot of great artists. And here's some, for example, the Jungle Brothers, A Tribe Called Quest, 50 Cent, Mob D. And when he started Violator, these are his artists that were under him in Violator. Buster Rhymes, Diddy, Nas, Ja Rule, Missy Elliott, Mariah Carey, Fat Joe, and Soldier Boy. Now, um, our uh, Soldier Boy is out here acting a little piece of fool. I'm wondering if they did something to Soldier Boy, allegedly. Allegedly. Not saying Chris Lady did anything, but if you're if you're around Diddy, you got to tell Diddy no. You already know how that go. But I'm wondering, shit, they ever got Justin Bieber looking all crazy out here. I don't know. Y'all drop down in the comments. Let me know. If, if, am I going off on a tangent? Or is, is this connecting some type of way? Because this is this is seeming a little piece of weirdness. This is getting a little piece of weirdness. This is getting a little piece of weirdness. So I don't know. I don't know, y'all. But um, y'all drop down in the comments. Let me know. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend, and tell a friend, and tell a friend. Replay food. Make sure y'all smash that like button. And I don't know, y'all. We shall see. All these, all these things are coming out now with this, you know, again, did he piss somebody off? And again, maybe the Fed's agenda is, I mean, the Fed's agenda is to close the case and, and to secure the win. Um, by any means, they have to do that legally and under the confines of the law. They're going to do that. So if they have to, you know, these lawsuits are coming out. These people, you know, everyone's going to come out to sue Diddy. If these lawsuits go through and Diddy's money is starting, you know, go gets low and low and depletes, he's not going to have any money for a proper legal defense, which is going to secure the win anyway. Now he has a new judge. Breaking news, breaking news. A new judge has been appointed to the case. So who knows... If, if that judge is, I want you know, allegedly, if, which which side the judge sways on? The judge is supposed to be on the side of the truth and on the side of justice. But we've seen it happen before. We've heard it happen before. It's not impossible. Just throwing it out there. Y'all catch it. Y'all know where I'm going with that. But I'm uh, let me get on up out of here, y'all, because I'm going to come back um, later on today with some more videos for y'all possibly alive i'm not too sure just yet but um i gotta you know we gotta talk about some more things y'all but replay crew make sure you smash that like button like share and subscribe to the channel tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend i appreciate y'all for being here this is something else it's and it's gonna be a lot more coming out it's gonna be a lot more coming out 
So again, all of y'all better check y'all go back in the memory bank from the nineties. Cause Diddy probably got a lot of y'all on them tapes. And again, while y'all was dancing, yo, Diddy this, Diddy that, Diddy throw the best parties, Diddy run the city. Y'all was dancing with y'all thought y'all was dancing with Diddy, but y'all was really dancing with the devil. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? What? And the Tim crew, we out. Y'all throw some hundred signs in the chat, and I appreciate y'all. I'll talk to y'all later.